by Gam if they do get a Nocturne. That's going to be the band that is going to be taken away. Segway level, probably not the greatest, that was but Skana and the Zigs stopped out and going to be removed. <laughs> Maybe just finish just strong. Believe. Just land, stick the landing, and you're good I'm on that I'm just too one. scared of success, Kobe. <laughs> okay. As the only once again banned on blue side, no surprises. The Jacks being banned by Gam. Maybe having a look through the skins, and Kiaya was like, whose skin is this again? And it said there was impacts, but we don't necessarily feel like that was a, a huge, uh, huge thing, but they are going to look yeah, to I, take away the Nocturne themselves. I think you have to, because I am 99% sure that always Gam just slammed Nocturne Orion on one sure. Yeah. And then from that point on, like, what are you going to do? We already know how good Levi is as a champion. He'll still be able to get something that he didn't get his hands on the last time around, but after last game, I think pivoting away from trying to ban out Levi when he still has a performance like that, when you use that many bans on him, definitely a good call. I wonder if they would want to get Kiaias, uh, you know, one of his other... Well, if they have Orion already, maybe... Or you Wukong? Yeah. Maybe Wukong feels pretty circly. We know so that circles, circles are pretty strong. And going down the list of Levi champions would make some sense. But Ash for Easy Love, I really loved his flash over the wall in game number one. Ash has been very, very strong this tournament and gives them Arrow. another engage option here. As now TL, do they pick away the Braum? Do they allow once again this Ash Braum to come through for Gam? Whether it's going to be a completely different idea as Nico a consideration. APA has looked fantastic on this champion in the past, and a lot of deception available with Nocturne Nico. Yeah, and if they do lock this, yeah, it is for sure going to be one of these super quick, hard engage comps for Team Liquid. So some things that, like you're mentioning already early, Atlas, uh, like the defensiveness of Braum or something, expecting these all-ins from TL, might be on the table for Gam. Shout out here from APA for the Aurelian Soul. Kaisa, yeah, I think yeah, yeah, Kaisa makes say. so much sense. If you're going full dive comp, then you want to get your Kaisa early because Kaisa will get banned. Kaisa is also one of the champions that, while she works really well in the dive draft, I think also gives an alternative win condition in the once AP you hit build. enough AP, you can just poke away the Brom. Absolute no brainer here with how both the previous game played out, and you already know TL was fully committing to dive. I do think that Braum into champions like Nico specifically can struggle somewhat, because Nico is often still able to find angles, despite the Braum being there, but the combo with the Ash is still going to be just as good as it was in the last game. Yep. I think this also sets TL up for a possible impact tank uh, this time around, yep. there's a lot of damage from Nocturne, Nico, and Kaiser already presented here. So they're not necessarily hard pressed into having extra damage from the top lane. But the rail going to be banned away. I expect more of these tank supports to be taken off the board here as well. So ban Wukong plus Vi here to yep. take away from Levi, I would assume. I think the Silas, the Silas can get through this time. I think that, yeah, yeah. taking away some of those options would be a good one. I'm definitely more worried about Levi. <laughs> Oh, Kindred, another another jungler, uh, certainly. Yeah, that's not a fun matchup. It's it's telling though again that so many resources have to be invested in making sure that Levi doesn't completely take over the game. Yeah, and, and also because you know Kindred ultimate kind of does, would counter the, yeah. the burst all in dive that TL are showing. Yep, Nico doesn't really enjoy that, uh, no. which he wants to just kill everyone with that one pop blossom. But the Leona going to be taken away makes a lot of sense here. Core JJ, not a whole lot of other engage options. Although, you know, Nautilus and Alistair yeah, are still I up. There's the Wukong that we expected to be banned away. And the Na for Kiaya. Oh. We saw a breathe on this earlier on. We know that this champion can also get completely out of control. But it can also be an orange buff, you know, on the other side of things. And how are TL going to deal with it? That's going to be the question as it will be locked away now. I wonder what we're going to see here out of impact. Interesting that they keep the R5 as well. I, most likely, I think it is Vi. Depending on what TL can lock in, you can also go for something like the Jarvan. I know we haven't seen a lot of him, but he is exceptional as a ball delivery Jarvan system. Jarvan Oriana, yep. Jarvan Oriana is, of course, a classic. Also provides some hard engage. I do think that's somewhat lacking with what they have here so far. But again, if you lock in Vi, I think you saw how well that worked last game. Rakan makes a ton of sense. I think Nautilus and... Kaisa are like the strongest in an isolation. You can't pick Nautilus in the Brom. That's just a completely miserable situation. So it's instead going to be the Rakan. And Rakan, I think, is also better in diving with the Nocturne and the Nico. As the Renekton 
Uh -huh. this, is a, this is a classic. The B5 Renekton, it's R5 yeah. Renekton that we personally dislike oh God, the most, is that's Kazix. That's, well, I mean, it's not anymore. We'll see what Ooh. Levi does decide yeah, to lock in. Get, let's not get. Yeah, the I hovers are excited. certainly very exciting. They are exciting, but they're not real. I, I, you know, I'm still apprehensive of saying the word exciting. I, it, it's okay, they're not here. Others. I know they're not it's here, fine. but I, 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 they're still here, you know, in my brain. I gotta that say, is going to be the buy locked in in the end. I got to say I'm more nervous after draft than I was heading into game number two already. Uh, I was oh I was really thinking that we might have gotten I on. I don't know about this one. We'll see. I mean, Gam, with the way that they played in game number one uh, and being able to get such strong early game leads, this... Team comp is just so sturdy if they get ahead. Like, their team fight is insanely good. TL, they do have speed on their side. They are a bit more a bit more flimsy in that if you just lock down the Rakan, um, oftentimes you can, you can blow them up uh, or a Nocturne early game. But TL's comp really relies on pinpoint execution here yeah. with the engage. It's with a their Nocturne, comp, right? Yeah, their Nocturne, Nico, and Rakan play has to be on point. And so far, it has really just been TL's bottom lane and, and the rest of the team. Into this possible final game for them at Worlds. And Impact is channeling his ex-SKT T1 alumni Marin with his skin from World. So that's fun. He does have his own one, but he's not playing Jax today. See whether he can channel some of that moving into this game. Let's see if this is yet another chapter in the history of GAM upsetting major regions at international events. They have done it ever since they appeared on the international stage. And I'm thinking that at that point, maybe we are just going to side with shocks. Maybe it's just not an upset anymore because GAM have seemed a little bit too synonymous with being able to take down so many of these teams. This year though, you know, they did lose these are best of ones, but they uh -oh. lost to fly as oh that's a face check. That's two! That's a cast curse if ever I've done one. Levi gonna be taken out for first blood. It's Yon that picks up the kill. Easy love now going the wrong direction. The ash is very, very dead, ladies and gentlemen. And you welcome TL. Sometimes you have to sing some praises to get some kills. And they have put in so much prep for people invading for lane swap wards. Gam putting down the lane swap wards, but TL, they pull the trap shut as they try and exit. What a huge start to a game that is a necessary win for them. This is absolutely massive. A thousand gold from just that alone as we check it out one more time. Oh, TL, I, that ward. Those are the wards I mentioned when they're coming in looking for lane swaps, because Gam lane swap last game as well. TL, they prep the trap. And this is exactly what they did in game number one. And that's what's so incredibly smart about a TL doing their homework from what happened in the game prior and say, you're not going to be able to do that again. It also, I think, plays a big part that if you are GAM, in what world will TL, will TL look for a level one fight when you have Ash and Braum, right? Like these champions, I think, are insanely, insanely strong level one. The slows, uh, the damage that's available, the Braum passive that's easily stacked on multiple members. Instead, TL getting what Feels like, I think, at the very least, some calming of the nerves. <laughs> yeah. As, as I feel like. Speaking, I can, speaking I can of see emotions, Kobe well, I was going to say on the coach cam, you yeah. see a stark difference between Spawn, the head coach, <laughs> and the analyst that is standing behind him with the full on yelling fist pumping going. Straight yeah. face for Spawn, though, they're always measured. And TL's bottom lane, I feel like, has been the point that has been most reliable so far at this tournament. Now that they actually got uh, some early kills for the side of Team Liquid mid and jungle, maybe we will see APA uh, and Umpty here really making use of that money because again, the Nico and the Nocturne were some of the early picks of this comp that really determined the entire direction. And that direction is forward in, yeah. in flanks. Atlas, you turn off the lights. <laughs> And there you go. Why yep. would he do that? He Maybe. said he wanted to at the very beginning of the game. To yeah, change. because then I can't see the mustache. It really <laughs> you don't have to bring it back to <laughs> It's <Florida>. your face. <laughs> I thought that that was where Kobe wanted me okay, to go. I, you know? I, 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 kinda, I felt like it was a perfect setup. It was I feel like I done. walked into that one. That one's yeah. on me. I did want to say, though, that, that I, I got a little bit distracted. I actually thought that it was, you know, because APA transformed into Yon. Oh, um, he managed to pick up the kill when he was in that transformed state. Is now Levi trying to come in, but not able to take away the crab. And so we are going to have both teams backing away. Oh, but what I was going to say is that 
I think there is so much on Umpty's shoulders, especially in this game, because in clutch moments, Umpty has struggled throughout his entire career. It, like, push comes to shove, and he's unable to do either. And if he's able to get things together, have a carry performance against Levi on this Nocturne, could be huge going into game three. I saw Impact solo killed by Anar early on in this tournament. So, uh, hoping it doesn't happen again. There. Well, he's going back in, looking for a little bit more. The Hyper Procs are really dangerous. Umpty's moving on over. There's the flash forward. Can the fear come no out? Oh! He gets into the brush, and that is the kill! So Impact not solo killed this time. I have never clutched harder than after <laughs> I said that. Yeah. Yeah. He uh, managed I, to click the ward, okay. but couldn't then immediately click the champion before I, the fear went I, off. I, I really thought it was that. I think that would have still been fine, because what I was going to lead into is the fact that, as you pointed out, Atlas, Nocturne is, I think, the most important part of this composition. Yeah. Umpty has, at that point, had one kill, double crab. Uh, so, so one kill, double crabby, and now has two kills. Three stacks on Ultimate Hunter already. So this Nocturne is like, it doesn't really get better in terms of setup to go into a mid game and get these high impact plays with Nocturne. And critically, getting the Gnar flash and teleport yep. down here, uh, Impact now with the wave pushing towards him is in much, a much, much better state. So, Ooh. you know, calculated uh, down to the very yes. last <laughs> auto attack there. <laughs> Tango Bob's landing and Emo taking a whole lot of damage here with this uh, caster matchup. I feel like APA is in a lot more comfort of a position here on the Nico as well. I just feel like his Nico 100%. just feels amazing. So, everyone's going to look at the flashes that, uh, you know, he messed up in, in the earlier, you know, games of the tournament on Nico. But this is one of his most played champions that he has a lot of confidence on. He was always a really big playmaker, uh, invested a bunch of time into it, so. It's a flash. APA is in a scary position right now. Shave yeah. Splitter, of course, can really help. You think Levi? Oh, no, not waiting. Oh. oh, he's going to walk out of it. The Pop Blossom goes absolutely nowhere as Levi gets in, but the Flash gets APA out of there. Emo, Elio trying to get on through as there's the dissonance. Oh, Again! no, Clockwork was wound up, and now the grand entrance comes in. Emo going to burn down. Core JJ locks up the kill, and APA's back. He finds another one. Humpty, this ultimate hunter is almost fully stacked before he even has the ability. The counter from Team Liquid is good. Even though sh the shockwave from Emo made them pause, the follow through was way too much there. Oh, yet another cleanly calculated play. <laughs> yep. Not even close. And I want to highlight, I think Gam getting a little bit overexcited here. Because yes, Emo is six, but if you wait for Levi to have six, this play always works. Beautiful. Right? There is no way it doesn't. The shockwave is beautiful. It completely dodges the uh, knockup from APA, but. I think Levi actually still got stunned, so he Ooh. uses his Q, uses his flash. So at that point, he is fully committed to just trying to make the play work. His free grabs come through, and Umpty is 3 0 and 2, 1.3k gold up. He's gonna get some free Raptors, and, and, and now his ultimate is available. And he is going the Stride Breaker build. I love this build so much more. Uh, uh, it's a bit confusing here, as uh, Umpty is going to be able to take the big Raptor. Levi, you cannot fight this. You can't, he's 3 0 2. Uh, you cannot fight this at all. Emo comes on over, gives him it's a shield, and says, please power. leave. And Umpty is going to then move on over towards this Bramble back. APA being a melee minion was odd in the mid lane, <laughs> but now we've got Impact. Trying to get Kiaya out of here, feeling a whole lot better in this instance. Ooh, but yeah, now, yeah. with the Hyperbrox coming in, I are just going to be backing away, not going to commit any further. A better Space time for Impact. a bit rough. Yeah. Uh, your focus on Umpty is really correct, though. And, and especially with this build, I love this build so much more because you can get your early TM at and you can just speed clear through the rest of the jungle. You already saw it there with the extra lead that he has. Well. Arrow. Going to connect. Shape split up. He is going to work out, but that was the clone, and he can hit both of them anyway. Emo going to finish that one up. The arrow from Easy Love looked too good. Uh, oh! No. He used his <laughs> TL's own emote! <laughs> oh, man. That's good BM. That, that is that is some I, solid that's, BM. That's, and all of TL have been emoting like crazy, so I think it's completely that's, warranted. That's what, like, that's the second kill that... I, I know that it was emo, but, like, he, that's the second kill Easy Love has gotten on APA. Yeah, series, with Ash the, Arrow. The last yeah, one was a snipe. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, on the Tristana and Tribush recalling. Yes, Umpty is big, but do not be mistaken. We saw oh, how good this game was. There's some darkness here. As there is a Megana on the horizon, but I think he's dead before it even happens. Culver Meek comes through exactly like it says. Oh. And Impact's able to take that one down. No horizon, Atlas. No. Not happening. Oh, no, it was on the horizon. Yeah, we just never got to the horizon. Uh, or something like that. That's sad. Trip, yeah. Trip cut short. Yeah.
Yeah, but have you thought about how crazy uh, ugly your mustache is? <laughs> <laughs> Got him! <laughs> Okay, this is getting personal. I'm not sure about that one. I'm not sure about that one. But now That's we've true. got a bit of a fight towards the bottom side. Perhaps as Easy Love looking to try and stack this one up. Killer Instinct <laughs> well, does come on is. through as, yeah, Jan trying to get a little bit more down, but doesn't get that last auto attack. So still able to stand their ground, but investing the ultimate is dangerous. Also, that's just not true. It's Kobe, beautiful. Kobe, I mean, you were actually like, also, Kobe, I know you're stressed, but try not to take it out on your co-workers. You know? Exactly. exactly. Chronicles um, feelings. You know? no, I'm fine. I'm fine. Umpty's here, waiting for Levi. Stride breaker done. That's when you're supposed to say, Atlas, you're not allowed to talk. Wait. There's the flash forward. Hits Core JJ with the ultimate, but doesn't land on Neon. Somehow that arrow doesn't miss, doesn't hit. And now Umpty's making his way in. Remember, this guy has every kill in the universe, but they're not going to push too far. Not going to try and find that, that, more than they can chew. There were no sums. I think he could have gone for it, but I think they want to make sure that they get the dragon instead. I think Umpty's also very aware of the fact that he has a gigantic bounty on his head, and if he dies, the game could be a big problem. And they don't have to push anything extra there because they have a guaranteed dragon. So I, I completely agree with both of you there. They're making the call. Probably a lot of, you know, the talk heading into this game is, all right, let's be calm in our play. You know, once you once you get your lead, just play this one out, because we can't give up anymore. If you lose this, then you are out of the tournament, so they don't want to overchase, take the guaranteed dragon, no Ash Arrow, no Braum Ultimate. They push the wave in, they just take their resources. And with this, even though the gold leads on the other end of the map aren't that big a deal, Gam's most vital members have effectively been, at least for now, taken out of the game, right? Both are facing very substantial losses, and for Gam, it's going to have to be a really heavy lifting duty for, or a job from the rest of the team. Emo, Easy Love got a stop. I know Easy Love has been trying with his Ash Arrows. That alone, I don't think it's going to be enough. Quite gonna work. Hawkshot getting a lot of value here. Spotting Core JJ and Umpty making their way towards Grubs. these Void Grubs. Six didn't mean a whole lot for TL in game number one, but this could be a very different story with the snowball they have already rolling. Yeah, 100% agree there because of the Nocturne also later for split pushing. Oh yeah. They have a lot of potential to what? pressure those side lanes. You've got a lead on your Renekton, uh, a much better state. It's also, so imagine being Gammon trying to push a side lane late game where you have to check every wave for, for the right amount of minions. There's a Nocturne and there's a Kai'Sa mm. that can play off of basically everyone else. Well, immediate teleport to come through here is Elio trying to get himself out. The Ruthless Predator holding him in place for a little while. It is teleport invested, so it is a fair bit there from TL, but they also pick up the Grubs on the other side. They can also crash a wave into the top lane out of turret. You can see Kiaya already very far back. Pop Flash. them also, as Easy Love is just going to explode. APA grabbing his second, and now Kiaya could be in trouble. Umpty is more than a top laner at this point in time. He is still going to back away that inner turret. And team be could, they can even rotate over to catch mid lane too. So TL winning both sides of the map here. You push in bottom with APA, you push in top with Yawn. Huge, huge tower gold there for Team Liquid. Impact and Core JJ rotate over to make sure no turret plates go down to Emo, and they can't keep pushing. So Team Liquid win the entire map in that sequence. We have Umpty just pushing a full wave into the turret. Yeah. Uh, um, he's just. He's just well, Core JJ is going to be in a little bit of trouble here. Battle Dance gets him out, and he's fine. Just fine. Nice Wait, little... Wait, never mind. Uh, I, got, oh, I got pranked by the mini-map. <laughs> <laughs> I got Nico. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. It's confusing yeah. to play against. And it's also... The mini-map does become a very dangerous thing to look at. Uh, and also, if you look at... <laughs> I know! Yeah, the, I... the kill feed as well is a bit of a problem um, because it comes up with different champions getting kills. It's, uh, it's a very confusing thing, but we That's will fine. try and stay on the board as best we can. And if we make mistakes, please laugh at we us. Are, we yeah. have already been very on topic, very focused. Yeah, absolutely. We've talked about a lot of things that are dangerous to look at <laughs> in the, this series and the previous series. Now, let's focus up Impact here. Going to get visual confirmation of Levi on the Raptors, but your, your job has really been set up for you already. Uh, you can see there's a trailing split push in the bottom of the map right now. Umpty with Nocturne ult available, hovering behind as they push APA to finish off this tower, just in case there was any sort of GAM attempt to use that tower gold as bait and, and pull a trap of their own. But there is no attempt from GAM because they recognize they're just so far uh, you know, outmatched in the gold at this time that they don't want to force that fight. This is, correct. this is 6.2k gold lead, like, in yeah. 13 minutes. This is 
absolutely insane. Game should be completely unplayable from here on out for Gan. I, as much as I think they did an incredible job in the last game, it would be unless multiple people on TL just all stack up into like a multi uh, emo shock wave and, and nar combo. Realistically, if any of their top ha like literally any of their characters that isn't core JJ stays alive, they have enough gold right now to, to clean up the fight. And yeah. barring a catastrophe, I do like the fact that this is on track to being a shellacking, which is a game that was coined by Spawn himself. We get to ask him whether How it's fitting. actually a real shellacking or not. Normally it's just a pre-25 minute win, there's not a whole lot to it, but sometimes there's nuance and we will be able We've to We've already talked about a lot of rating systems, so I feel like we need to get <laughs> into the depths of this exactly. one as well. No zigs in this game, we can't, we can't go through that one. As let's have a look at our MasterCard Lane Economy snapshot, and the snapshot is TL are winning by a lot in all of them. That's my breakdown. That like is it. valid. Yeah. Uh, not a lot of not a lot of nuance on that uh, yeah, I, snapshot. I'm lacking a lot of nuance <laughs> in this one. I can only imagine if you're Gam as well that you're gonna be obviously still looking for opportunities, but also gonna be thinking about what we're gonna do in the next game because this game really felt like with the way that the level one went. From that point on, the game is so hard as there is. Yeah, arrow gonna connect, and it is gonna connect. It, it, and it's very easy for Team Liquid to progress their snowball in this game because of the yeah. fact that they got the early grubs. So and Amti just yeah, I was about to say he just kills him. Yeah, right? he's just gonna he's just gonna kill him. Has Ooh. a spell shield that's gonna be used on the shockwave gorgeously. And I could have been really hyped for that, but there was just <laughs> he's just no way yeah. he's just <laughs> dead. Yeah. You know the shockwave is coming. It has a good animation, so yeah. correctly reacts to it and uh, is able to spell shield it. Umpty here, the general, marching through the enemy jungle now, actually pushes the bottom wave, starts to rotate over as impact. Yeah, it does manage to get the stun onto Levi, and there's the killer instinct to go in. Got okay, Yon might have gone a little bit too far, but the quickness comes on through, and the wallets are big and heavy. That is going to be a pop blossom. APA comes forward. And that's going to be on putting the last little cherry on top. And well, maybe there's another cherry as Easy Love's going to have to flash away. Impact wants to try and catch up to him, but the volley will slow down the crocodile and Easy Love will limp his way back towards his base. And now is your line, Chronicler, because this time Umpty was pushing in the side lane all yeah! the way up to, to secondary. I actually, you know what? You're I prophetic. No, no, I, <laughs> I saw him and I'm like, I'm not believing that. I'm not, I'm not making the call again. <laughs> it's a mirage. As we take a look, this is really as you'd expect, STL, when you're this fed, any fight basically is a good fight, right? And yeah. this doesn't start off that well. A lot of damage goes into Yon. He doesn't really get to do as much as ideally he'd like, but it just doesn't matter. Gam yeah. is very deep into enemy territory. And, and to yeah. your point, he is ulting, you know, point blank his face right into two melees, yes. but that he knows, especially with the shield, they won't have enough damage to finish him off since his entire team is there. Yeah. And they have the item advantage, so full sends it, gets the extra reward, for TL to I, continue to push forward. And I feel like a lot of people talk about these damage Dragon Souls as being some of the best for snowballing a game. I think the Mountain Soul is really underrated in that department because you can just go all in on damage in your itemization and everyone's basically a tank at the same time. I love those types, especially when you have a Kai'Sa that wants to uh -huh. ult face first into people. And get a massive shield. And yeah. I hear that resistances are pretty good when you get a massive yeah. shield. I love casting with you guys straight off the plane. Because <laughs> we talk about massive extra shields. Fun, extra fun. Um, <laughs> TL here. I've thanks always liked it. I don't, know what, I don't <laughs> know what you're talking about, Kobe. T TL, though, also take a look at just the complete vision coverage um, with both sides of the jungle warded up. They're going to continue to threaten these plays where they can easily rotate from their mid lane and from your jungle over to pick people off on the side of game, and that's kind of the point where you guys are talking about how hard it is for Gam to even set up their comeback play, is because the entire area is just lit up for TL, and they have all of these tools to pick you off. Especially, I think, when you hit level two on the Killer Instinct, like, the range becomes so big. Level one, you still have to be very close, but... You've just got two Nocturnes, basically. You do, yeah, and, and both of them will kill you very quickly, and not give you a whole lot of counterplay. And for TL now, Again, I, I wonder, because barring something absolutely insane happening, TL's going to win this game. We're going to go to one and one. My All right, is, stop no, trying to curse. No, I, okay, <laughs> tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> no way. <laughs> well, there's a pop blossom, gets a flash, and there's a paranoia. So I don't think that Emo's going to be getting out of this one. 
That is going to be the Tangle Bob's landing there as well. As meanwhile, on the other side of the fight, Kiaya trying to get that wall up down. It's going to work out, but impact is so tanky. The Nara into the wall is fantastic. But Yon, they're just one after the other, dive bombing these members of Gam. And Kiaya gets under his inner turret, but he's still limping away without a jungler. So as I was saying, <laughs> what does it mean for the series? Because at the same time, like this game felt like it was over, not necessarily level one, but I think once the early skirmish came through, where they got the gank yeah. onto top side, Ooh, grand entrance. How is Game so 3 going to look? Yeah. As that's Kiaya, probably dead. He's burning down. Koji J going to collect it with the Ignite. And now the base is broken open. Impact looking to put another dent into it in that mid lane as well. But TL, a lot of money available. They're going to go back and spend it before these inhibitors are going to be tested. It is... Yeah, um, that's a 12,000 gold lead pre-20 minutes. I mean, that's why I'm kind of, you know, going off Chronicler's early point about yeah. what does the next game look like? <laughs> well, well, and well, I actually well, we think it's really, like, it's kind of better for Gamma. And I know it seems weird, right? But if you're just completely knocked out of a game, agree. you get this entire game to think about game three. And it's also, I, I feel like for Gam, they're already the underdog. They had a really good game one, I think, in multiple facets. Yeah. And a game like this, I think, is, it's the same where if you lose level one, it's much easier to ride off than if it's a hard fought, like 40 minute yeah. slugfest. And yeah. as the underdog, I think Gam going into next game st uh, still should be very confident, even with this game obviously being a write off. A so your disaster. perspective is this game is such a big beatdown that it's like ripping off a band aid quickly? Yeah, no, straight up. That's that's exactly You're what like, it is. You're like, oh, we already lost that a while ago. But yeah. I actually, no, but don't yeah. you think the players are in here like 15 minutes in? I they're agree. like. Already thinking about draft for the next game. Yeah. Already thinking about specifically the level one setup and checking their corners, basically. If you are going to invade looking for lane swaps, as and you said, you know, TL have really focused on that aspect of the game. And it's side selection as well, you know, they can move over to the blue side, then there's going to be a complete uh, yeah. change up when it comes to these bans. And TL have utilized blue very well because they need to ban things like Aurora on blue and the Yone on blue. As Korja J might be caught out here, but is able to just move back towards a plethora of vision and teammates that are moving in. So if we take this line of thought further, uh -huh. and you're looking at it from TL's side, would you then want to just make them wait and live in this deficit for even longer. No, I think you want to just finish no, it as think, soon no? as you okay. can. Yeah. Because it doesn't, it doesn't teach you anything, right? You don't get anything out of it. APA, that's good spot vision. it. Yeah, spot it out. That is very cute. He's just a void mine. I love that. He's just hopping. He's hopping around. They do know. We need to zoom oh, he's in hopping. on that one. It's OK. Looking for an option here, as there's the pop loss. Some hits onto three. He's completely by himself. He's going to be guaranteeing a Baron for his teammates. And there he goes. But. You know, that is still the Vi being taken down. The arrow is going to sail on in, and oh my goodness. Thankfully, Levi was one of the ones that did fall earlier on, so that one wasn't going to be a thing. As now Impact gets into that back line, it's, it's his turn. Crocodile. As Kiaya pushes him into the wall there. Caught JJ not offering back a lot of damage, and TL throwing a couple of solo laners away, but oh. now Yon gets in, my god! The Plasma is raining down, and Easy Love is just really dead. Emo, the last one left alive. It wasn't clean, but it worked. A TL really testing the limits of what they get get away with with this gold lead, but it ends up working out nonetheless. Yeah, I mean, honestly, they can, right? Yeah, all, yeah. A, all APA is doing there, he locks up the entire team on him, so there's going to be nobody else. I mean, I know Levi just sent it into the Baron, try and steal it away. Uh, let's look at the Levi side of it, because we all saw the APA side of it front and center, and he kind of walks up to go for the big ultimate, but Levi tried to get in the pit way ahead of time, uh, because they did not have vision for yeah, the health, so had no idea, just was just trying to get the miracle play, uh, right? So they're really just looking for the miracle attempts there on it's, the side again. I don't know, you don't know how you win this game, but it does start with stealing that Baron yeah, blind. exactly. So makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Uh, wasn't, of course, quite able to because Hawkshot on cooldown, things like this means that you just can't get in there. TL gonna look for Soul Point, they will be able to pick that one up. Now with the Baron, should be just about playing side lane homework. Pushing them in, trying to break open this base already. The, outer tur uh, the inhibitor turret in the mid lane is taken out. Still pretty early in this one, so getting all these waves in order is a little bit more difficult, but while well, it's very, very heavy. So 14,000 gold, the approximate gold lead. Not used to talking about a lead like that um, when we have like downtime. Normally it's like 15,000 gold, and th that gold is sort of raining down on the opposition, and then the Nexus explodes. But this is we're just setting up for some lanes. And, uh, and TL have the entire bank. Yeah. 
The gold lead here, massive, of course, at this early stage in the game. But so is the Baron buff pushing. So yeah. you kind of see like the decision there from TL. They're like, you know what, APA, that is a cool looking ult, but we're not going to follow with Kai'Sa ult and, and Nocturne ult. We're just going to finish the Baron so that we can finish this game. And they use that Baron, push in. They've got enough money and another yeah, one. There's a four man pop blossom. Everyone is just put into the blender. TL, they do want to get out of this game. Move to that game number three. And they do it decisively off the back of APA. The Nexus turrets are now just going to fall like an afterthought. And with one of the largest gold leads I've ever seen, they will complete the shellacking at 24 minutes and 20 seconds into the game. We are going to six out of six. Oh, you love to see it. For the final team to get to that 2-2 two, two score, to see who gets another chance to make it to those quarterfinals. Exactly, and one more team is going to be leaving us, of course. So it is time to go to a break. We'll see whether it's TL that can carry the momentum or whether it's going to be Gam able to fight back in game three.